Well, right on the buzzer there. A newly crowned Miss South Africa 2023, the 25-year-old Natasha Yuver is no stranger to pageants. In 2016, Natasha, who hails from Gauteng, won a Miss Globe essay and proceeded to a Miss Globe competition in Albania, where she placed fifth. Now, in 2020, she entered Miss South Africa and landed third position before being crowned Miss South Africa 2023 at the Sunbet Arena at Times Square in Menlin in Tswane on Sunday. Day. Now, the BCom marketing graduate who owns her own fashion brand uh, says that at the core of South Africa's social problem is education. And uh, Sunday, she uh, already uh, had secured 1.2 million rand in bursaries because education should never be a privilege, as you heard her say there, limited uh, to a fortunate few. And she's calling on government officials and, of course, people in positions of power to give this generation an equal chance in order to propel the nation forward. Miss South Africa 2023 Natasha Yuber is here in studio with us. Good morning. Good morning. Natasha, Good so, morning. Uh, you know, I must say, it sounded like the crowd was rooting for you. I know I was rooting <laughs> ah, for you. Thank so, you. You know, I no, think, you, you know, many people were really happy that you were crowned Miss South thank Africa. You. But looking back at it now, has the reality dawned on you yet? Not at all. Not at all. It's day to you. And... It almost feels like I'm still waiting for the crowning. And every time I watch this clip, it feels like I'm watching someone else. Like, I got goosebumps because I remember everything vividly on stage. Everything. I was so present. I was so calm, cool and collected. Everything just felt right. So up until the moment of being crowned, that's where everything went to blur. I was like, I don't know what to do. I asked Ndovi, what's happening? What's happening? She's like, you in the South Africa. Is this real life? But now the job only starts. I come second day on the job. You know, I, I've watched you and, and, and I have to ask you, um, this, of course, not your first entry yes. um, uh, to become Miss South Africa. So is this something that you really wanted mm. deep down and why? Mm. So when I went to Miss Universe in 2021 and not placing top 21, I initially did not want to come back. I said, you know, if I represent my country, this is enough. But after the way things turned out, I kind of afterwards felt like I got so much support and love from South Africa and I got so much encouragement that I was like, okay, maybe I should reconsider. And I also didn't feel fulfilled. Like when I stood on stage and South Africa not being called, I was like, I know this is not the end. I just felt it. So it was subconsciously always there. And then last year I was thinking, okay, you know what, let me, let me take this journey on again which I thought I was right for. And I wasn't allowed to uh, enter because of the regulations. And so I was like, okay, it's a timing thing. It's a destiny thing. And um, I went on with therapy, which I started the year after I came back from Miss Universe. And I went, I did my therapy sessions, mentally kept working on myself. And the difference a year makes, really a difference a year makes. Like Crown Chasers was here this year. And I could just see how much I transformed. And I knew I want to showcase this version to South Africa because it's completely different. I look at the girl in 2020 and I'm like, obviously, I love her. I appreciate her and everything she's done. But like, I don't even recognize myself. So let's talk about your therapy sessions. Yes. You know, what were those about? Yes. Because people would look at you today, sitting here as Miss South Africa, having placed third previously, you know, having enjoyed um, a, a, a jaunt on the global stage. And they would think, what problems does she have? 100%. So short, I, w I was in the US for Miss Universe. I was there for about a month. And then I came back that June. And I fell in deep depression. Um, the results of Miss Universe almost left a sense of not being worth it, not being good enough to place as high as Demi, Zorzi and Tamron, which was really hard to comprehend. You know, you, you wear South Africa, you carry the, the people of this country. You need to represent them well. And with that result, I obviously felt like I didn't do it well. Um, struggled to a point where I just didn't get out of bed. And my best friend said, this is my psychologist number. Just go see her. You don't need to continue. Just go see. And I remember the first few sessions, I would just cry constantly. Like, whenever I would bring up Miss Universe, I would just cry because it's PTSD that's, that stayed with me. But then also realizing throughout the 2020 journey was the first time I ever spoke on my father's passing. 
And I was also very, very emotional about it. And I still, in therapy, cried so much about childhood trauma that I never worked through. I, I haven't worked through it by 2020. Then 2021 comes, it's depression. So I had a lot to unpack. I had a lot to deal with and to say, Natasha, you, you need to come to terms and to peace with what has happened in the past in order to move forward. And it took time. Like, it's been two years of therapy. I was still going strong. I also started seeing a life coach last year. I really, really wanted to focus on how I could evolve as a woman, how I could grow. And I knew coming back to Miss South Africa, I was like, Natasha, if you come back, there needs to be a lot of purpose. A lot of purpose. And because I, I, I really want to be a Miss South Africa that's going to be memorable, that makes an impact, that doesn't just come and say, this is what I want to do, this is my statement, but sticks to her word. And, and you already come in with that, yes. you know, uh, the bursary yes. um, uh, 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 scheme that you are working on. And, you know, I think many people will resonate with that. The fact that people sometimes get excluded uh, yeah. through no fault of their own, but because of how the system, unfortunately, is currently mm. set up. So, you know, let's talk about that. Yes. And, and who will benefit uh, from yes. uh, that scheme that you've set up? Yes. So I, like I mentioned in my statements, I've been financially excluded before and we lost our childhood home when we were 13. My father was unemployed up until the day he passed away three years later. And so financially, my mother just couldn't carry me through varsity, never mind even my school fees. And that's what modeling in a way did for me. What people don't realize, I didn't do the pageants to, uh, as this hobby. Eventually growing older, I knew I wanted to be Miss South Africa, but I did these pageants because there would be a bursary up for grabs just in order for me to study my marketing degree. And so I gained a platform going to Miss Universe representing South Africa and I said, it's my responsibility now to use it. I went back to Boston City Campus where I got my bursaries from and I said, I don't think you guys realize what you've done for me. I don't know if you guys know the story, but this is the way I could actually study my degree through, through Boston. And they pledged in. And then also I did a lot of work with brands on social media. So I, the, the, also the bigger, uh, like I said, people in positions of power, I said, what's your social responsibility? And so ASUS is also pledging uh, and secured 25 bursaries for, for only women in the IT coding space. So now it's just in, like rolling it out and like seeing how are we going to select these members who get these bursaries. But then also it's a call on all varsities in South Africa, institutions, like imagine how big this can get if we go to every single university, private or not, and say, can you guys give five bursaries mm. each? How many would that be in total? So there's potential, there definitely is. There is, and I'm so glad you're taking that up uh, because uh, this crown, obviously also elevates you to a position where yes. uh, you can go and knock on doors and people yes. will open those doors because you are Miss South Africa. So as you say, using it for a purpose. But I was also struck by how, especially this year, given that it was the first time that um, um, mothers and married women yes. were also allowed to enter, but I was struck by just how hyped you all seemed, you know, in, yes. in, in those responses. And everybody was seemingly super smart in those responses. Yeah. And uh, talk to me about that. Yes. You know, is that something that each of you brought individually? Because at some point yes. I'm like, were they trained? Were they coached no. to do that? Like, what was going on behind the scenes? So I think if anyone followed everyone, not anyone, obviously people would. <laughs> Crown chasers. It was a reality program that we did before and in order to get to the top seven. People don't realize how hard that was for the seven goals. By the end of that, anyone felt ready for the crown. So when we got back to finale week, everyone was to a point where it was your best. We walked into interview and not fearing it because crown chasers really humbled us. It was really hard. Like, it tested and, and, and pushed us to a point where you were so uncomfortable every single day. By the time August came, everyone was comfortable. Got on stage and they before and said, what are you going to do with this crown? Why are you here? What is your why? What is your goal? What is your purpose? So we knew going into final week, are you ready to take on this crown? Are you immediately going to start? And for me, that was very important to say, I've already started, now it goes bigger. Okay. And now just because you have so many engagements lined up for uh, this week and uh, the rest of your reign, 
to the South Africans watching this morning, you know, what's your word to them as yes. Miss South Africa 2022? Yes, um, I see us as a very resilient country, very resilient. Our people face a lot of challenges, like a lot, more than one, every single person. And I think for me, this was just showing resilience, showing that second chance and really not giving up because as South Africa, we just can't give up. And I hope to be a representation of that. I really do. Well, Natasha, you're there, everybody. And what's not to like? And uh, she is, of course, the most beautiful girl in the land. Uh, the 25-year-old crowned on Sunday as our Miss South Africa for 2023. So I know I'm going to hear from you. And, uh, of course, looking forward to seeing what else Natasha will be getting up to. Second chances. Love that. And it goes to all of us, no matter what the situation may be.